macht jedoch Constable Marrows Aussage, der niemand am Fenster gesehen hat. Mr. Holmes, whatever brings you here so late at night? I'm interested in the case of young Leighton Chapman. He was arrested earlier this evening and accused of a double murder. I beg your pardon? That case is quite clear to the police. Or are there any new facts that we don't know about? <laughs> Who knows, Inspector? Look, you are free to investigate, of course, Mr. Holmes. Chapman was arrested with a revolver in his possession which you can find in the evidence room. The suspect himself is in custody. Did you find anything else on his person? A few personal belongings. Nothing particular, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Lestrade. Hmm... Mr. Holmes, what is the trouble with that lad? Isn't he guilty of murder? Unwahrscheinlich zu einfach. So this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. And it seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. Two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco. Nothing interesting. A cheap watch, bought with his own money, no doubt. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. It's all a mistake. Calm down, Leighton. I have come here to help you. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. My brother? You know him? Then that means you're... Sherlock Holmes. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Rhymes. I'll tell you everything. Okay, let's look at him. He has on all fälle a blue eye and a thick nose in his face. Hmm. 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 Ist auf der Straße aufgewachsen. Er ist ein Büroangestellter. Und er war im Gefängnis. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. I left my work and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering off Moon. And then suddenly what with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I, I thought about turning back to the police, but 
As I was thinking of that, I saw a fur person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. I saw that one had blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. I took it, and then I followed the third man. Interesting. Pray continue. I turned a corner, and I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some, some sort of panic. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police and they laughed at what I said, but I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him. But then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds. But I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming. And then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half-blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. Layton, are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark, and he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm. And what about that? Nothing so special. He, he was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps... It's strange, but... I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I oh, know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was, it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested, and he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish, unless you wanted revenge. No, Mr. Holmes. I was just being brave and stupid. Nein, ich glaube nicht. Was geht in Sassen? I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vercotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? How? However could you know that? You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? And you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our paths split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. We shall see you soon, young man. Hmm. Mr. Holmes, what is the trouble with... 
I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. Mr. Turner und überprüfen Sie die Sicht aus seinem Fenster. Es muss etwas geben, was seine widersprüchlichen Aussagen erklärt. Keine Beute. Persönliches Motiv für, die brutalen für das brutale Verbrechen, das Leighton Chapman in der Harvard Street vermutlich begangen hat, könnte es ein persönliches Motiv geben. Leightons Revolver und unterschiedliche Schüsse. Gleichzeitige Schüsse. Mr. Turner konnte unterschiedlich, äh, Unterschiede zwischen den Schüssen hören, weil in Wahrheit drei Schüsse abgefeuert werden. Zuerst ein einzelner und direkt danach zwei gleichzeitige Schüsse. Schussposition. Mr. Turner konnte unterschiedlich zwischen, Unterschiede zwischen den Schüssen hören, weil diese an verschiedenen Punkten der Half Moon Street abgegeben wurde. Ich würde sagen gleichzeitige Schüsse. Leitens Aussage und der Revolver? Nein, über eine Stunde Aussage? Fantasie, Mann. Die Person, die Leitens Chapman in seiner Aussage beschreibt, entstammt seiner eigenen Fantasie, um von seiner eigenen Schuld abzulenken. Das glaube ich auch nicht. Zwei Opfer. Leitens Aussage? Nein, Leitens Revolver? Doppelmord. Kenneth Butler und Brian Vercotti sind Opfer eines Doppelmords geworden, der von einem einzelnen Täter begangen wurde. Es passt alles noch nicht so richtig zusammen. Zwei Opfer, Leitens Revolver, eine Stunde aus. Erdrückende Beweis, was die Zeugen aussagen und die Tatwaffe deuten klar auf einen möglichen Täter hin, Leighton Chapman. Möglicherweise kam es in der Half Moon Street zwischen Kenneth, Butler und Brian Bercotti zu einem Schusswechsel. Untersuchen Sie die Leichen und stellen Sie den Schusswechsel nach. Erfragen. Mr. Turner behauptet, es sei die, er sei die ganze Zeit am Fenster seiner Wohnung gestanden. Laut Constable Morrows Aussage hingegen war niemand am Fenster zu sehen. Leighton und Brian Bercotti, eines der Opfer, haben sich gekannt. Sie tragen beide dieselbe Tätowierung vom Gefängnis. Mr. Turner, ein schwaches Bein, deswegen hinkt er. Ein Teil nach Schlüssel, den wir, dem, den wir am ermordeten Kenneth Butler gefunden haben. Ein Stück Holz, das neben der Leiche von Kenneth, Kenneth Butler im Straßenpflaster steckte. Leighton Chapman ist der ältere Bruder von Wiggins und zwischen 20 und 30 Jahre alt. Er wuchs auf der Straße auf und hitzköpfig, wie er war, wanderte er für eine kriminelle Tat ins Westgate-Gefängnis. Im Moment lebt er nicht mehr auf der Straße und arbeitet vermutlich als Angestellter in einem Londoner Büro. 